Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. My dear friends and colleagues, I think it's important that we must remind each other today in this debate that a lot of research and thought went into the drafting of the constitutional clause that is there. Let's remind each other that before 1913, there exists no record of a large-scale dispossession of the crude nature that General Herzog introduced in June of 1913. With the arrival of various peoples in this part of the world of, that we call South Africa today, some from Europe, others from, from the Philippines here as slaves, others from Malaysia as slaves, others from England, others from, from Germany and France as religious, uh, fugitives from religious wars, arrived here over between 1652 and 1913. All of those people, we might, no, you need to think. You must think. In this country, the people congregated here. They joined with each other. Today we have, and then those people, there was no, there was no title before they came. Title became part of the process of settlement. And then in the course of all of that, people of our country mixed and all of that, they emerged among other things. They made a large number of the population of our country today called colored. I don't know who colored who. <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, even those people, no, over there you must think, you must think, and you must confront history. And then people acquire title and acquire title all over. E, by the way, here in the Cape under the British and KZN under the British, there was, there was uh, what was called qualified franchise. Many of you think there was always apartheid. Apartheid is introduced in 1948. But throughout all of us, all of our people were entitled to buy and possess land, and that's how title became the order of the day in South Africa. It was only in 1913, when General Herzog, after the National Party had won the elections, introduced the 1913 Land Act and passed a law that said black South Africans can only be entitled to live on eight on 8%, 8 percent, 8 point something percent of the land of South Africa. And that was followed by what Sol Plaki deals with systematically in native life in South Africa, of how Africans were dispossessed. And that he, they tried to ameliorate in 1935-1936 Land and Trust Act. When they tried to increase that 8 percent to 13 percent, and that is why when we were negotiating at Codesa, it, in fact, over the years, even in prisons on Robben Island, we studied this question to understand how we could get our country out of the depth of the danger of mutual slaughter for no reason, that we concluded that the 1913 Land Act represented a major point at which we must say People that owned land and that still had titles, some still have, others didn't have because they've lost them, that those people must come forward with those titles and that land must be returned to them. Honorable Member. That is the first point. I, I want to oh, make that point. This on, subject, Honorable Member, this subject is fraught with dangers if we don't think expired. what we are doing. I thank you, Chair, but this is not... We need more discussion on this question. Thank you, Honorable Member. Otherwise, we're putting our country in danger. Thank you, Honorable Member.